Whenever you're ready. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May God's grace and peace be with you. May God fill our hearts with joy. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on this, the Lord's day, to praise you for your goodness and to ask for your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Welcome to this second Sunday of the Easter season. The rectors have been on holiday this past week and will be returning this week. I'm here this morning with Cynthia Connell, Owen Swain, and my name is Sheila Beach. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. We have an advocate with God, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, who offered his life to save the world from sin. This is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. The peace of the Lord be with you. And, and also, also be with you. you. certainty, and by your Spirit's gentle touch, make us a people forgiven and forgiving, through Jesus Christ, the giver of peace. Amen. Amen. God of all who doubt and believe, by the gift of your Spirit, enable us to hear with our ears, to see with our eyes, and to touch with our hands your word of life, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our God. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were in one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceedings of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as they had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from Psalm 133. 
O oh God, how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is is now, and and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, here's the trial. 
of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Then Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that, you be and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. 
You notice it the minute you get off the roller coaster or step off the gangplank after a long time at sea. You are now back on solid earth. The uncertainties of being upside down in the air or on the unpredictable waves of the sea are gone, and you are back on predictable earth. We use the term grounded to show that we are in a stable place emotionally and physically, a metaphor for having feet firmly planted on something that is solid. Many years ago, during a Bible study in the home of a teacher colleague on a hillside in the Himalayan mountains, the bench I was sitting on began to shake. Looking up annoyed to see who was shaking the bench, I caught the surprised expressions of everyone else in the room as we all realized we were in the middle of an earthquake. In that moment, I felt a sudden and stomach-churning fear as I also knew there was nowhere to go that was secure. The very earth we depended on to be grounded was shaking. The buildings we were in were not earthquake proof. We were on the side of a steep mountain, and everything in my world was uncertain. It was that stomach-churning, complete upending of certainties that Matthew wanted to signal in the Gospel, both at the time of Jesus' death on the cross, when the earth shook and the rocks split, and again here, as the women came to the tomb and an earthquake greets them. For Matthew, the radical history-changing events of the cross and the resurrection were so momentous they could only be described and accompanied by the very shaking of the one thing people thought was secure, the earth under their feet. In both these moments, God was doing something so profoundly dramatic that only an earthquake was sufficient to describe how destabilizing they would be. The outward appearance of the crucifixion was of a criminal killed because he was a threat to religious and political power, deemed a sinner. Instead, the one on the cross is God's own self, choosing to enter pain and death, not demanding it of us for sin, but breaking its power by entering it willingly. And then God radically destabilizes the very certainty of death by raising Jesus in the resurrection. In the space of three days, God breaks all assumptions and certainties. Our assumption that the power of death is at is absolute, is shattered by the possibilities the resurrection holds out. For if that is true, then nothing can or ever will be the same. If death is not the victor, then there is hope for everything Jesus taught and promised. If death is not the victor, then love fulfills the law. Forgiveness is possible. New life is always available. Is it any wonder that it took 40 days of appearances of the risen Christ before the disciples were able to fully accept and believe the evidence before them? we would hardly have been any quicker to believe this truth. 
They would need to go back over everything Jesus had said and ask how it fit into this new reality. Their expectations of a Messiah who would tackle Roman oppression had to be recalibrated into something more far-reaching for all time and space. And eventually realizing it was and is for all people. It is hard for us to capture the profound nature of Easter morning as we have grown up with it as a backdrop of our lives and our calendars, as the ground of our lives, and not as a radically new way of seeing all we had expected. But maybe our current crisis is a new moment in which to grasp the power of Easter. For surely our expectations have been upended. The comforts of our lives have been disrupted by COVID-19. The ground under our feet has been shaken by economic, social, and physical uncertainties, including the threat of death. And we ask, where is God? Where is Easter now? The cross reminds us that God is always willingly in the very center of the pain and suffering. Sitting with those who are sick and dying when no family are permitted near. In the hearts and hands of all those who sacrificially go to work as medical personnel to face the risk of the virus each and every day for themselves and their families. In the midst of seniors, facilities, prisons and jails and special needs homes where the risks are even higher for residents and staff. Walking with essential workers facing daily tasks to provide food, transportation, and daily needs for us. And in the voices of all who cry for justice in prevention, protection, and care as the virus spreads. The power of the resurrection is in our midst also. For Easter is not something we are still waiting for, it is here now. It is the yeast working among us, the hope that knows that despite the pain and fear, there is a power stronger than even death itself. The power of the virus raises the fear of illness and death, and can and has awakened in us selfishness, hoarding, and greed. The resurrection continues to work through the presence of God in our midst, the Spirit of Christ that instead awakens deeper generosity, care for neighbor as self. It is in the hearts and minds of those who in the face of suffering and pain give back life and hope. It is in the heart of Chef Gilles in Meaford, who is weekly making bread and meals for anyone who needs them. It is in the hands of those bringing groceries to neighbors. It is in the spirit of generosity to those offering free concerts to soothe our spirits. It is in the church finding new ways to connect with neighbors, parishioners, and strangers. It is in the gestures of kindness, gentleness, love, and grace all around us. And it is in the promise that new life, transformed life, is always possible, no matter how dark this moment may be for us, through the power of God bringing life out of death. 
earthquakes are destabilizing, upending moments of radical disruption to our lives. Sometimes they are devastating, destroying homes, lives, economies, and communities. Sometimes their power overwhelms us with despair. And sometimes they are the sign that what is happening is and will be radically transformative. Pay attention to the earthquakes, for God is there in the midst of them, entering into their destructive power and bringing life out of death. Matthew knew that power and calls us to notice it again now. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, giver of life, hear us as we pray, saying, Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for the church. Let your church be a living sign of the woundedness and healing of Christ, sharing the gift of forgiveness and the gospel of reconciliation. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for the earth. Help us see the scars of death that mark your good creation and to seek the blessing of the life that you offer to all creatures. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for all nations. Show us how good and pleasant it is when people live together in unity and anoint us with your wisdom so that we may seek the ways of life. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for this community. Give us a vision of the common good not clinging to our own possessions, but seeking the fullness of life for all as a testimony to Christ's resurrection. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send, Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for loved ones. Be near to those who walk in darkness and lead us all into Christ's light so that our fellowship may be a true and joyous and we may be complete as a community. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. By the blessing of your spirit, help us to live as we pray so that the world may come to know the gift of life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember the first believers who shared one heart and soul 
held their possessions in common and distributed them to all in need. In that same spirit, let us present our offerings at the feet of the risen Lord. offer you this day and strengthen us in the new life you have given us through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen. Amen. and now as our Savior Christ has taught us we are bold to say our, our Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. This is the blessing of the Lord. Live forevermore. Alleluia. We thank you for joining with us today for worship. Um, just a few announcements this week. Please watch your emails um, from both your parishes and the Scent for details of upcoming services and events. If you haven't subscribed yet to the Scent's email, please make sure that you do that so that we can get you on the distribution list for the ministries that are being joined together from All Saints, St. Augustine's, St. James, and the Southern Trinity Parishes. Heaven 